The film Enemy at the Gates tells the story of a young boy named Vasily and his great-grandfather, who teaches him how to use a sniper rifle with great skill. They live in a cold region of Russia and go hunting for wolves. Vasily is hesitant to shoot a wolf that attacks their horse and ends up losing the horse to the wolf. Later on, the story fast-forwards to 1942, during World War II. Vasily is now a young man and a soldier in the Russian army. He is among the soldiers who go to fight against the Nazi German army. The Russian army travels by train towards the city of Stalingrad, where the German forces are located. Along the way, soldiers remove women and children from the train. Hitler's army had already taken control of all the oil resources in Europe and now their target was Russia, with the city of Stalingrad being a key location. Upon arriving in Stalingrad, the Russian commanders give an order to their soldiers not to withdraw and warn that anyone who tries to escape will be killed by their own comrades. The soldiers are transported by boat to the other side of the river, where the war is taking place and the Germans are present. As they cross the river, the soldiers see the river full of corpses and are filled with fear. German planes come and bomb and shoot at them, causing many casualties and sinking several boats. Fortunately, Vasily manages to cross the river to the other side with some other soldiers. However, there is a shortage of weapons, so the Russian officers decide that one weapon should be shared between two soldiers. They instruct the soldiers to kill German soldiers and take their weapons so that everyone can have a weapon. Unfortunately for Vasily, he only gets ammunition while his friend gets the weapon. He must now kill a German soldier in order to get a weapon. The soldiers are then sent to the front lines and are told by the officers not to retreat. Anyone who does so will be executed by the Russian army. When the signal to attack is given, the soldiers charge towards the German soldiers. The German forces respond with bombs and weapons, making the Russian army an easy target for them. As the battle continues, Vasily's friend is killed and Vasily tries to take his friend's weapon, but someone else grabs it before he can. Vasily is left without a weapon. The Russian soldiers realize that the Germans are gaining control of the fight, so they decide to retreat to their original positions. However, upon their return, the Russian officers execute them for abandoning the battle. Only those who remained and killed Germans were spared. After the battle ends, the German forces take control of Stalingrad, leaving the city filled with the corpses of Russian soldiers. Birds begin to eat the dead bodies. Suddenly, a speeding car approaches and the German soldiers shoot at it to stop it, causing it to overturn. A Russian soldier comes out of the car. Danilov, the soldier who escaped from the car, was actually in charge of the Russian army newspaper. He pretended to be dead among the Russian corpses in order to avoid being captured by the Germans. The Germans arrived and set fire to all the corpses, but Danilov was lucky enough to not get hit by any bullets. He started vomiting due to the stench of the dead bodies. Danilov then began to crawl away from the corpses and stumbled upon a German officer taking a shower. He found a gun among the corpses and decided to kill the officer. Vasily then takes the gun and fires at the German officer, killing him instantly. After the missile hits, Vasily and Danilov escape and make their way back to the Russian side. Danilov is amazed by Vasily's incredible marksmanship and decides to make him a hero in the Russian army's newspaper. Vasily became a legend among the Russian soldiers, inspiring them to fight against the German forces in Stalingrad. As the battle rages on, Vasily continues to use his sniper skills to take out key German targets, including their top sniper, Major Koenig. In the end, the Russian forces are able to push back the German army and reclaim Stalingrad, thanks in large part to Vasily's bravery and marksmanship. Vasily's quick and accurate shots had taken down three out of the five soldiers protecting the German commander, and the remaining two were now aware of his presence. They threw a grenade towards Vasily and Danilov's direction, but Vasily was able to react quickly and shoot one of the soldiers before he could throw the grenade. The grenade exploded midair, causing some damage but not enough to harm Vasily or Danilov. The remaining soldier tried to run away, but Vasily chased him down and took him out as well. The final German soldier attempted to escape in order to inform his comrades of the situation, but Vasily aimed and fired at him, killing him before he could get away. 
When Danilov witnessed this, he was impressed by Vasily's bravery and recognized him as a hero. They both returned to the Russian army headquarters where Danilov wrote an article in the newspaper praising Vasily for his actions. The article stated that Vasily had managed to destroy the helmets of four German soldiers and even that of a German commander. Vasily felt proud of what he had accomplished for his country. As the battle raged on, civilians sought to escape the violence by boarding boats to cross the river to the other side. However, Russian soldiers stopped them from doing so. Soon after, a representative of Stalin, Khrushchev, arrived and was furious with the commander for the dispatch and subsequent killing of Russian soldiers by the Germans. Khrushchev warned the commander that if Stalin were to find out about his actions, he would be executed. He advised the commander to take matters into his own hands and use a pistol to end his life before Stalin could inflict a worse fate upon him. After Khrushchev left the commander's room, the soldiers heard a gunshot and realized that the commander had taken his own life. Khrushchev, impressed with Danilov's idea, decides to implement it. The Russian army starts promoting and encouraging soldiers who showed bravery in the battlefield, and this news spreads among the troops. The soldiers feel a sense of pride and motivation, and their morale begins to rise. The promotion of soldiers who display courage also motivates other soldiers to fight harder, knowing that their bravery will be recognized and rewarded. The Russian army is now more determined than ever to defend their city against the German invasion. After returning to the military printing press, Danilov writes an article about Vasily's impressive sniping skills and precision in killing German soldiers. He then informs Vasily that he has become the head of the committee and a sniper for the military division, which makes both of them extremely happy. The article about Vasily's accomplishments is published in newspapers and quickly gains attention, causing people to talk about his bravery in killing 33 Germans and forcing 13 German commanders to resign. Vasily sets his sights on a German commander and prepares to take him out. Meanwhile, Danilov returns to the military printing press and publishes an article about Vasily and his precise and skillful methods of killing Germans. He then goes to Vasily to inform him that he has been appointed as the head of the committee and the sniper of the military division. Vasily and Danilov were ecstatic about their new positions. As the story of Vasily's heroics was published in newspapers, all the newspapers started talking about his achievements, how he killed 33 Germans, forced the resignation of 13 German commanders and became an inspiration for the Russian soldiers. But during his mission to target a German commander, Vasily was interrupted by a child named Sasha, who admired Vasily's heroics. Sasha took Vasily to his home, where they met Sasha's mother who also expressed admiration for Vasily's heroics. Meanwhile, when Danilov arrived at Sasha's house, a knock on the door startled them. But it was Danilov's friend, who had come to inform him that the miners had sent letters and wanted Vasily to write his name with theirs. While Vasily was asleep, his friend woke him up and informed him that there was a problem in the storage place that they needed to solve. Vasily and two other people went out to solve the problem. While outside, Vasily saw a person sleeping behind a window and aimed at him, but when they approached the window, they found out that it was just a puppet. It was actually an ambush and their friend who stayed below was killed by the German sniper. Vasily saw a cigarette on the ground and knew that there was someone else present. Meanwhile, German planes came and bombed the city of Stalingrad, causing chaos and destruction. Vasily's companion got scared and started to run, but the German sniper killed her skillfully. Vasily remained in the building under the bombing. On the other hand, Quinn, the German sniper, was reading the newspaper with Sasha, a Russian child who admired Vasily's heroics. Sasha translated the newspaper from Russian to German, which was about Vasily's proficiency in sniping and his high skill. Sasha shares with Quinn his admiration for Vasily and how he has met him. Meanwhile, Vasily goes to the military headquarters and meets a soldier named Kalikov who was taught sniper skills by the German sniper Quinn. Vasily informs Danilov about the deaths of the two soldiers who were with him and how the German sniper Quinn was able to move around and evade detection. Danilov reveals that Quinn is the most skilled sniper in the German army and is specifically targeting Vasily. Vasily attends a party in his honor where he is praised for his hunting skills, and Tanya expresses her belief that he will be able to kill Quinn. 
Vasily wakes up to find his friend Kelly telling him that he saw an unknown sniper, and they both investigate the situation. They quickly realize that it was a trap set by the Germans and make a hasty retreat. During their escape, the Germans shoot arrows at them, but they manage to get away unscathed. Vasily cuts the communication wire to prevent the Germans from calling for backup, and they begin to move from one location to another. They come across a German soldier attempting to fix the communication wire, but Kalikov kills him before he can alert the Germans. A soldier reports to Sniper Quinn that they have captured a Russian soldier. Quinn interrogates the prisoner, asking about Vasily's whereabouts. The Russian soldier says that Vasily is always on the move and not stationary in one place. However, he refuses to give a clear answer and insists he doesn't know where Vasily is. Seeing an opportunity, Quinn gives the Russian soldier German clothing and orders him to fix the communication wire. A tragic incident occurred when Kalikov mistakenly shot the Russian soldier who was disguised as a German soldier. Meanwhile, Vasily and his team were trying to devise a plan to confirm Quinn's location and make sure he was not present in their new location. They came up with a plan to have Vasily raise his helmet as a target for Quinn to snipe, but Quinn did not take the bait. This made them think that Quinn was not there. However, when Vasily tried to cross to the other place, Quinn revealed himself and managed to kill Kickoff. Vasily was able to escape and cross to the other side. While Quinn was in the building, he gave Sasha some candy and asked him to provide information about Vasily, including his movements and anything else relevant. Quinn then took the place of a mannequin in a hallway and waited for Vasily to come to him. However, Vasily was warned by his companion that Quinn was waiting for him in the iron corridor, so he decided to change his route and instead crawl through the ventilation system to avoid being caught. Quinn overhears a noise coming from the ventilation shaft and positions himself to ambush whoever comes out. When Vasily and his companion emerge, Quinn attacks the companion and Vasily takes cover behind an engine, dropping his weapon in the process. Vasily instructs the wounded companion to return to headquarters and attempts to retrieve his gun by using a knife tied to a rope. However, Quinn snipes the rope and the weapon remains out of reach. Suddenly, German planes appear and bomb the area, shattering glass everywhere. In the chaos, Vasily's image is reflected in a mirror, allowing Quinn to spot him. As the injured soldier arrives at headquarters and tells Tanya about what happened, Danilov watches her reaction and the way she cares about Vasily. Tanya decides to go to Vasily through the ventilation pipes and, as she exits, Vasily warns her. Quinn watches Vasily talking through a mirror, so he knows that someone is present and has come from the pipes. Vasily tells Tanya about Quinn's location and asks her to take a mirror and reflect the light on him. Tanya does what Vasily asked of her and reflects the light on Quinn. Vasily takes his weapon and shoots him with his hand. They return to headquarters and argue because Vasily was able to aim a shot at Quinn for the first time. Bosley and Tanya have a conversation about Danilov's proposal to Tanya. Bosley encourages her to consider it as he believes Danilov is a good person. Meanwhile, Sasha informs Danilov about Quinn's movements. Danilov then asks Sasha if he knows where Tanya is and Sasha reveals that she was seen with Vasily. Danilov then tells Sasha to inform Vasily that all the snipers will gather at the airfield the next day. Vasily meets with Danilov and asks him not to write about him in the newspapers as he wants to fight like any other soldier. Danilov reminds Vasily that he is a skilled sniper and that his heroics inspire other soldiers. Danilov also asks Vasily if he has spoken to Tanya about his proposal, to which Vasily replies that he has spoken to her but does not know her decision yet. In the story, Danilov suggests to Vasily that if Tanya marries him, she will have a happy life. Later, Danilov introduces Sasha to Vasily and tells him that Sasha is the one who cleans Quinn's shoes. Sasha informs Vasily that he sees a unique yellow dirt on Quinn's shoes that is only found in the chemical factory. However, Vasily becomes angry with Danilov for exploiting and endangering children. Sasha then takes Vasily to the chemical factory where they see Quinn arrive. Vasily hides among the corpses and falls asleep, while Quinn prepares to carry out his mission. However, German soldiers attack the city, and Quinn is distracted by a thief among the corpses. 
The thief is caught by the German forces, and Quinn is summoned by the commander who tells him that they found his wallet and that Vasily has been killed. After being told that Vasily has been killed, Quinn is informed that a plane is waiting for him to return to Berlin. The Russian commander becomes angry upon hearing the news of Vasily's death. Danilov arrives and informs the commander that Vasily is actually alive, but the commander insists that the army's morale would suffer if news of Vasily's death is spread. Instead, the commander suggests publishing Vasily's latest picture in the newspaper. Danilov tells Tanya that Vasily will not be returning to headquarters, but he doesn't reveal the reason why. Tanya wonders why, and Danilov keeps the truth from her. She speculates that Vasily will return once the German bombing stops. As Tanya listens to German headphones, she hears news of Vasily's death. Meanwhile, Quinn visits Sasha to get his shoes cleaned and notices that Sasha is crying due to Vasily's death. Quinn assures Sasha that Vasily is alive and appreciates his grief since they both are Russian. Quinn instructs Sasha to stay at home and not tell anyone while he waits for Quinn in front of the train station. Later, Vasily tells Danilov that he was asleep and didn't see Quinn. He also sees Sasha sitting with Danilov and tells him that Quinn is waiting for him at the train station before dawn. The next day, Vasily goes to the train station and sees Tanya there. He asks her how she knew he was coming, and she tells him that she just had a feeling. Through Sasha, Tanya informs Vasily that she knows he is alive and not dead. Meanwhile, Danilov becomes anxious as he watches Vasily and Tanya's relationship and decides to go back to the newspaper headquarters to write an article attacking Vasily as a rebellious and traitorous person. However, his plan to turn public opinion against Vasily takes a long time and does not succeed in killing Quinn. Sasha goes to the train station to check on Vasily but Quinn is waiting for him there. Quinn reveals to Sasha that he was an informer for the Russian forces and he takes him away. Later, Tanya witnesses Sasha's hanging through binoculars and realizes that Quinn killed him because he knew Sasha was a spy passing information to Vasily. Angela was filled with rage as she watched Quinn walk away and skate. She grabbed her sniper rifle, determined to take revenge on the man who had caused so much pain and suffering. But Vasily, her partner in love, stopped her. He promised that he would take care of Quinn and avenge their fallen comrades. Suddenly, the sounds of German soldiers could be heard in the distance. They had arrived in the city and were going door to door, searching for any potential threats. The soldiers approached Sasha's mother and demanded that she ride the boat across to the other side. But she refused, insisting that she would not leave until her son returned. It was then that Danilov revealed the truth to Sasha's mother. He had joined the German army and had died during their escape. Devastated, Sasha's mother was hit by a missile and killed instantly. As Tanya lay dying in the hospital, Vasily received the devastating news. He wept uncontrollably as Danilov helped him track down Quinn's location. Quinn believed that he had killed Vasily and was shocked to see him waiting on the other side of the street, rifle in hand. Quinn prepared for death, saluting Vasily for his courage and skill. But Vasily had other plans. He shot and killed Quinn, taking his weapon and placing it on Danilov's body in honor of his bravery. Two months later, the Russian army emerged victorious over the German army. Surprisingly, Tanya had survived and Vasily went to visit her in the hospital. He was honored for his service and his weapon was placed in the Stanograph Museum. This incredible true story had finally come to an end, but the memory of those lost would live on forever. Are you a movie lover who struggles to keep up with all the latest releases or simply wants a quick recap of your favorite films? Look no further than our YouTube channel. We offer in-depth recaps of popular movies, from classic hits to the newest blockbusters, all in one convenient location. Don't miss out on valuable insights and analysis that will deepen your understanding and appreciation of your favorite movies. Subscribe now and join our community of passionate film enthusiasts.